Council table this evening by Katie Gargano, our town clerk and recording secretary, and I'd ask her to please call the roll. Councilor Cheney? Here. Councilor Susie? Here. Councilor Lippman? Here. Councilor Haynes? Here. Councilor Felch? Here. Mayor Hosmer? Present. Also joined by City Manager Kirk Biotti, as well as Finance Director Glenn Smith. Sorry. Moving along to item number six this evening, it's a council proclamation, which is the presentation of the 2022 BNRs Award. So, usually, I think we step up here. <laughs> it's your first one. It's gonna be two weeks now. Yeah, the worst So, any bets as to who's getting it? <laughs> uh huh? Oh, it's someone that took two pages. Uh, 35 years ago, the Laconia City Council established the <laughs> Deborah BNR's Memorial Award for Outstanding Service to Children and Youth in the Lakes Region in memory of Police Officer Deborah BNR's. Late Officer BNR's served the city and its youth with uncommon devotion, dedication, and distinction during her nine years with the police department before her death. Each year, a committee comprised of one city councilor, one member of the police department, and one member of the school board selects an individual to be recognized for this award based on nominations from members of the community. The award honors a member of the community who has enlivened and enriched the lives of young people. The family of this year's award winner moved to Laconia, New Hampshire, from Barry, Vermont in the 1970s and it didn't take long for his parents to make lifelong friends in the community and get involved in the youth of this city. In addition to supporting their three children in numerous sport leagues, they also became board members, coaches, school board members, etc., and volunteered wherever they could. So Rod Roy, you're this year's <laughs> Memorial Award winner, so come on up here as I talk about you. The winner of this year's award had an 18-year coaching and 20-year board member career with the Laconia Chiefs Youth Football and Cheer, coaching at every level with kids from tiny mites to the oldest participants. During his time, he held many board positions with his longest tenure as the league president. He also served on the state board representing uh, LYFCA as its voice among other programs from around the entire state. He was also a coach of several New Hampshire, F New Hampshire FBU all-star football teams that played around New England and competed well with much larger programs. Upon his retirement in 2018, the LYFCA established an annual scholarship in his name to support local Laconia youth in the endeavor to continue their education and sports involvement. In 2001, he started coaching in the Louisiana Youth Basketball League uh, which he retired from last year after his 20th season. In this league, he also held numerous board positions, including president for many years and continues to coach the all-star team and officiate hundreds of games as a volunteer. He was a major part of bringing the Laconia Holiday Tournament back to life after many years of hiatus from when his parents were a major part of its success. This tournament brings schools and programs from all over the state to our city for a tournament encompassing three full days. In 2003, this year's honoree started to coach not only football, but also a, a very new lacrosse program at the middle school level, coaching middle school and youth football during the same season. Not only is he the coach, but he has been heavily involved with the kids, their teachers, and making sure players maintain sufficient grades to earn their playing time on the field. He's also been supportive, strict, and very structured for his uh, for the success of the kids in the classroom as well as on the field. He is still heavily active in coaching football and still has the support of the lacrosse team that he has handed over to a couple of former players he coached over the years. 
In 2004, he started coaching the Laconia Middle School basketball team and still coaches there today. He has led many of these teams to undefeated seasons along with many tournament championship awards over the years. In 2006, he started as a football coach at Laconia High School on the varsity sidelines and still can be seen there each week. Over his tenure at Laconia High School, he arranged his work schedule at Men's State Prison in Concord so he could be at one of, <clears throat> of the two, sometimes both, weight room shifts to help the kids with off-season and in-season workouts to try to be the best they can be. He also coached on the Chad East-West game in 2016, 17, 18, and 19. One of the many highlights of his coaching career was coaching in the Maple Sugar Shrine game in 2008. <clears throat> After his recent retirement from his normal job, which he worked for 30 years, he immediately became a parateacher at Laconia High School. So now he roams the halls each day assisting as many students as he can along with the student he is assigned to. In 2010, he ran for and was voted onto the Laconia Parks and Recreation Commission, which he still sits on today as a very active member. In 2015, he became the coach of the Laconia High School lacrosse program, and again, is still part of that program today, most recently helping lead the team to a state title in the 2021-22 season. The winner of this year's <clears throat> award not only still has a close relationship with many of his current and former players, but also their parents, as they quickly realized what he is all about and really appreciated his coaching style and structured expectation from his players on and off the field or court. He has been and continues to be an important part in shaping many of the youth in Laconia, and there's no end in sight. The father of this year's winner was the first ever recipient of the Deborah Bionars Award upon its inception 35 years ago. We are extremely proud to present this year's Deborah Bionars Award to Rodney Roy. Congratulations. Really well earned. Really well earned. All looking for a couple of words. Yeah. Um, not a lot to say. Very humble. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ryan. Thank Moving right along to item number seven, acceptance of minutes from previous meetings. Minutes of the regular city council meeting of January 9th, 2023 were distributed to the city council on January 19th, 2023. With no corrections or changes submitted to the clerk, the minutes will be accepted as distributed. Item number eight. Under consent and action items, 8A, request to establish rental fees for Boardwalk and Weirs Boulevard vending spaces for Laconia Motorcycle Week 2023, 100th anniversary of such. <clears throat> Approval from the City Council's request to confirm the rental fee for this Boardwalk and Weirs Boulevard vending spots for Laconia Motorcycle Week 2023. As you can see, <clears throat> The uh, new fees are in front of you with 10 by 12 boardwalk vending spaces at $1,750 each. 90 foot block of space for the Laconia Motorcycle Week Association, no charge. Will Weirs Boulevard, six 10 by 12 spaces, 550 each, or one 12 by 75 for 2,000. Please note that the vendor fees for the boardwalk spaces were last increased for Laconia Motorcycle Week 2022 when the council approved increasing the fee from 1,500 per space to the current 1750 per space. There are 16 vending spaces rented on the motorcycle, on the boardwalk for motorcycle week. <clears throat> this report was submitted by the city manager. Right now, I'll be looking for a motion to approve the rental fees for Laconia Motorcycle Week 2023. Vending spaces located on the boardwalk and Weirs Boulevard as presented. So made by Councilor Phelps, seconded by Councilor Susi. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. Five votes in the affirmative. That motion passes. 
Item number nine this evening is citizen comments for matters not on the agenda. If you're here present in the chamber and would like to speak to a matter that is not on the agenda, <coughs> please step forward. Nope. Okay. Moving along to item number 13, which is public hearings. <clears throat> item 13A, which is uh, public hearing granting an easement on city land, parcel 458-205-20. Notice of this public hearing was made available in the December 30th, 2022 edition of Laconia Daily Sun, posted at Laconia City Hall. Laconia Community Center, Laconia Public Library, and the offices of the SAU. <clears throat> Action on this item may be taken up under unfinished business later on this evening. I'd like to open the public hearing at 7.13 p.m. And if you would like to speak to this matter, now would be the appropriate time. <clears throat> We we'll close this uh, hearing at 7:14 p.m. Please. Item number 13B, another public hearing, which is progress of the renovation of the Laconia Housing and Redevelopment Authority space at 17 Church Street. Notice of this hearing was made available in the January 12, 2023 editions of the Laconia Daily Sun, New Hampshire Union Leader, and posted at Laconia City Hall, Laconia Community Center, and the Laconia Public Library. Community Development Block Grant, CDBG funds are available to municipalities through the New Hampshire Development Finance Authority. Up to $500,000 annually is available for economic development project. Up to five hundred dollars for housing projects, up to $500,000 for public facility projects, up to $500,000 in emergency funds, and up to $25,000 per planning study grant. All projects must directly benefit a majority of low and moderate income persons. <clears throat> this is a progress update uh, of the renovation of the Laconia Housing and Redevelopment Authority space at 17 Church Street. A 5,500 square foot open space was renovated to provide 17 offices slash exam rooms and reception area and multi-purpose conference room for client professional services and meetings going forward. The space which will be used for client consultations, educational seminars for low and moderate income clients has ADA access its own parking along with the use of the city's parish and municipal parking lots for client and tenant use. It's nice to see that mentioned. I'd like to open um, the public hearing at 7.15 p.m. Uh, Tom Cochran from the Laconia Housing Executive Director here for any kind of public comment, but we're very happy that the progress has been complete and we're very happy to be working towards uh, finding a tenant and, and moving forward. But thank you again for the city for the confidence to move forward on the project and also the funds available. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Anyone else here who would like to speak to this matter? Seeing none, let's close the public hearing at 7.16 p.m., please. Item number 13C, another public hearing. Changing the proposed Laconia Housing and Redevelopment Authority tenant at 17 Church Street. Notice of this public hearing was made available in the January 12, 2023 editions of the Laconia Daily Sun, the New Hampshire Union Leader, and posted at Laconia City Hall, Laconia Community Center, and Laconia Public Library. Laconia Housing and Redevelopment Authority proposes changing, proposes changing of the proposed tenant in the uh, LHRD renovated space at 17 Church Street, Laconia, from the proposed tenant of Partnership for Public Health New Hampshire to Health First Family Care Center. The majority of Health First clients are of low and moderate income. The tenant move from partnership to public health to Health First Family Care <coughs> Center was due, to, was due to not coming to a long-term lease agreement and commencement date. Fortunately, there was interest from Health First Family Care Center who provides services to similar levels of low and moderate income client base. The addition of the office space in Laconia affords Health First the opportunity to have an immediate impact on Laconia residents in need of behavioral health services and future primary slash urgent care services. Space will allow Health First to increase its capacity, hiring additional staff to perform these clinical duties and better meet the growing need for behavioral health in the community. 
Further, the location of 17 Church Street to downtown makes it walkable location for many low and moderate income households that may not have transportation available. The central location also lends itself nicely as an extension of the existing Health First campus, which is less than one mile away and will afford staff the ease of going back and forth if and when needed. The benefit to Laconia Housing is the need for an additional behavioral health partner for uh, their tenants to assist with quality of life needs, which is integral to success. I'd like to open the public hearing at 7.18 p.m. If anyone would like to speak to this matter, now would be the appropriate time. Still available for assistance if need be, Tom? <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, Tom Cochran, Executive Director of Laconia Housing. We're really looking forward to working with health care, family uh, care centers. Uh, essentially, this, the space has been really helpful to work with Laconia Housing. Whenever we get a chance to work with our tenants as well as any resident with the residents of Laconia, uh, it's been very helpful to partner with our other nonprofits to be able to provide support services across the line to be able to continue to keep our residents housed. And when that happens is with our partner agencies. It's not easy to be able to continue to keep people housed when there's issues when housing is integral and keeping people uh, housed essentially or not and keeping people not to go homeless essentially means support services. When people are, have troubles and issues going on, behavioral services is really key. So this is really when partner agencies really come uh, in, into play here. And being so close to be in town is really helpful. Healthcare, Health First is really right now down on Stratford Street. They're looking to add another 17 additional uh, staff members, staff into our area here, which is great, which is going to be great to be downtown as well. Using the parish parking is already working very well for us right now. So it's really been helpful to you know build, build a additional uh, walking traffic for the city and really nice to see that traffic downtown which has been really cool to be able to enjoy the downtown uh, involvement so thank you again for the city for uh, having faith in us all the best to you thank thanks tom were you open for a question perhaps from councillor susie tom you yes sorry. yes okay tom i have a question for you yes i'm just trying to get the logistics help for us which is a busy corner yes and moving from there down to 17 church no this is actually going to be a second location they are health first uh, is in the old uh, Scott yeah, Williams building. Scott Williams building. Yeah, they, they are moving. They actually have been looking for space for the longest time. And essentially, they're going to add another 17 staff people in, into the Laconia area. They had choices to stay. They actually have another location down in Franklin, and they're adding another location down in Laconia. Uh, so they're going to have three locations. Okay, so in other words, the one at, at, on what would you call Stafford Street? Okay. Yes. That's not moving. No, that's staying. Okay, so what happened to the Partnership for Public Health? They are staying at, uh, I don't know what their plans are right now, but right now I think they're staying at 67 Water. Okay, because I, I read the comment, the comment do not to come into a long-term lease agreement. Right. And commit, that's Partnership for Public Health. Correct. Could not reach an agreement with? With the Laconia Housing. With Laconia Housing. Yeah, we, we could not come up to an agreement at the time. Okay, so Health First is going to have has an agreement with you yes and they're going to expand actually what they're doing at the 17 church street that's correct okay yes thank you thank you I just want a clarification that's thanks tom right thank you no one else who would like to speak to this matter i'd like to close the public hearing at 7 21 p.m item number 13 d a public hearing it's a request to clear to declare city owned property on lafayette street parcel number 444 dash 126 dash 17 as surplus property notice of this hearing public hearing was made available on the january 11th 2023 edition of laconia daily sun posted at the laconia city hall laconia community center laconia public library and the offices of the sau action on this item may be taken up under unfinished business i'd like to open the hearing at 7 21 p.m if you'd like to speak to this matter now would be the appropriate time No one speaking. I'd like to close the public hearing at 7.22 p.m., please. Item number 13E, a pub, uh, uh, final public hearing of the evening. Request to increase sanitary <coughs> sewer rates beginning <coughs> February 1st, 2023. Ordinance 2023-189-50-01. 
Notice of this hearing was made available in the January 14th, 2023 edition of Laconia Daily Sun, posted at Laconia City Hall, Laconia Community Center, Laconia Public Library, and the offices of SAU. I'd like to open the public hearing on agenda item 13E at 7.22 p.m. If you'd like to speak to that matter, now would be the appropriate time. Seeing no one as speaking on this public hearing, I'd like to close the public hearing at 7.23 p.m. Um, item number 14 under presentations, which is a le legislative update from Representative Steve Bogert. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor, Councilors, City Manager. My name is Stephen Bogert. Uh, this is my first presentation to the city. Uh, Council <laughs> of the State of New Hampshire's monthly revenue focus for the month of December. Okay. The information for this presentation was provided by the Department of Administrative Services. All right. So they come out with this once a month. I'm not sure if anybody's aware of it yet. Uh, but it does come out once a month and it's sent out to everybody so they can see how the state is doing on a monthly basis. And they do an analysis of it, comparison to the previous uh, month and uh, our plan and of the same time period of last year. The, uh, the un unrestricted revenues for the general and educational funds received during December totaled $322.8 million, which was above the plan by $59.8 million and above the prior year by $16.4 million. Year-to-date unrestricted revenues totaled a billion two hundred and twenty-four million, which was above plan by two hundred and seven million, and above the prior year by thirty-nine point seven million. So it shows we're going in a uh, interesting direction. For if you listen to the news and stuff, you would go, "Wow," because they don't paint such a pretty picture. They keep painting how gloom and doom and everything's going on and yet New Hampshire seems to be able to wiggle through all of that. It might be a little tiny and I apologize for that but all right for business taxes for December total 193.3 million which were 36.6 million above plan and 5 million above the prior year. Year-to-date business tax collected continued to be above, planned by 114.9 million and 13.3 million above the prior year. According to the Department of Revenue Administration, uh, the largest contributor to the increased business tax revenue is the estimated payment being up 1% compared to the same time last year. Mills and retail uh, rentals tax, total receipts net of municipal transfer for December came in above plan by 5.2 million and above prior year by 1.3 million and year to date total re receipts net of municipal transfers were 41 million above plan and 0.8 million above prior year. According to the DRA, the November activity as represented by gross tax collected in December from, from taxable meals were up 6.1% and from hotels was up 11.1% from the same month last year. So that says our restaurants are doing very well. People are eating out and still enjoying themselves. And with the hotels and stuff seem to be thriving still. So that means people are coming and enjoying the New Hampshire way of life up here. To me, anyway. I... Tobacco tax receipts for the month were 20.2 million or 1.6 million 
below plan and one million below December of last year. In addition, year-to-date collections were 8.9 million below plan and 6.3 million below the same year-to-date period last year. According to the DRA, year-to-date stamp sales were 8% and the bond receivable balance was 14% below prior year. So on a good note, I guess people are smoking less. And on a bad note is we are not getting as much money from it, which I guess is a good thing because then it's not paid out to the health side of it. So I guess it's a win-win. Interest and dividend tax collections for the month were reported at 4.8 million, which were 1.2 million above plan and 0.9 million above prior year. Year-to-date collections through December came in at 33.5 million, which were above plan by 0.6 million and 6.6 .6 million below prior year. DRA has reported that the increase in dividend interest and dividend collections compared to prior year were primarily due to the increased tax notice and estimated payment. Real estate tax, interesting. This, is, this was an interesting one because once again, if we watch the news, you would think everything's going to, in the wrong direction. The numbers will speak for themselves, I guess. Uh, real estate tax transfers for December were 20.6 million, which were above plan by 3.6 million and 0.5 million below the same month last year. Year-to-date collections were 27.6 million above the plan and 6.8 million above the same period in the prior year. According to DRA, the numbers of transactions reported by the counties for the month of December, these are November information being moved, uh, November collections were down 30% and transaction values for the activities reported for the county were 3.9 percent below the same month last year. So the values appear to be going down. So the selling price of the houses are going down based on the uh, deed tax because that's what it's based off is the selling price. A little bit. Other revenues for December were above plan by 7.5 million and above prior year, 5.5 million, primarily due to the interest income. Interest income is reported as unrestricted throughout the year until it is allocated between restricted and unrestricted funds in accordance with the state statute. Not real sure what that is, so I'll leave, gotta look that one up myself, so. Transfers from lottery for December were above plan, 7.3 million, due to the elevated sales caused by the large power ball jackpots and sporting sports betting. And there's going to also be in review uh, is horse betting now uh, for ticket sales and stuff. So that'll be might be added to our uh, to our assistance. Transfer from DHHS recoveries for December were below plan, plan by 0.2 million, primary due to the lower than planned estate recovery and cost settlement payments. Now some of these other graphs are gonna show some of the analysis that was done through it, but uh, in this one it was your general and educational funds uh, comparison for uh, to 2022 and it gives you a synopsis going down of what uh, basically I ran through by the slides and stuff and then this one is actually gonna break it down and show the differences between the general funds and your educational funds which uh, show some of the actuals and plans for the monies that are coming and going so at the moment, the state's not in a bad shape, okay? And if it's any indication, 
of the other things of local business and stuff. It should be helping us since we're <clears throat> tourist and industry and stuff like that. It should be uh, uh, a positive note for us that the people are still coming. The gas taxes, uh, the highway fund is doing great. It's kind of leveled off, but that's okay. Fish and game is level. Liquor analysis, I, I kind of thought that was interesting, is uh, kind of flat to below plan. And I thought that would be the one thing that would be higher, but and that is that. So I'll try and take any questions if you need to. Uh, if I don't have an answer, I will definitely have to go back to the state to get those for you. Uh, Representative Bogart, uh, Bogart, thank you very much for um, coming tonight and uh, sharing this information with us. It's, um, uh, it's, it's great to see our representatives from Concord here and trying to keep the council, uh, city manager and staff and myself abreast of what's going on. Um, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, looks like Councilor Cheney might have a question. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I <clears throat> have a comment first that uh, rooms and meals are up because the price of food has gone <coughs> up dramatically. Uh, <laughs> and what concerns me is, and I know you weren't here for all of this, but years ago the cities and towns got a much greater share of, of uh, rooms and meals than we get today. Mm -hmm. Any effort you or, or uh, Representative uh, uh, the four from St. Clair you. might uh, ha have to uh, share a little more of that excellent increase in revenue uh, would be greatly appreciated. One of the other areas I personally am concerned or, or upset about is retirement. When I was paying into the retirement system, the state uh, gave the cities and towns a substantial portion of the retirement fund. And today the city is burdened with a huge retirement uh, cost that uh, we were told we were never going to have. Then all sorts of problems seem to come up and the legisla legislature found a way to force us to pay a lot more into the retirement system. I guess my point of all of that, and I, and I appreciate the mayor <coughs> giving me a moment to, to speak, I hope you and other members of the legislature will take some of those millions of dollars in excess of what was planned and think about the cities and towns. In this case, think about this city, but all the cities and towns deserve something more than what they get out of, out of the state at the moment. The state you know, has a windfall, in my mind anyways, a windfall, yep. and can't seem to find a way to give some of it back to us. Well, I hear there's rumblings going around about the retirement fund and the state portion of that, so I'm keeping my ears to the ground on that, and uh, that is, on a side note, that is what we're here for, is to help serve the council at the state level, okay? So uh, when you have uh, needs and, and re questions and stuff like that, that is what we here as a representative should be doing if we're doing our job, is taking that to the state and <coughs> digging around and rooting it out and trying to find answers, okay? Cities should not be left on their own to uh, work through this, so if well, there's the state finds plenty for us to do, uh, but, <laughs> yes. but like rooms and meals, mm -hmm. um, those are supposed to be shared with the cities and towns and suddenly the money went away. Now you're rolling in dough. How about giving us some of it back? I think we, I, I think we can. Sorry. It's a good. No, no, that's well taken good and, take and understood. Good talk. Uh, yes. And, and on and the side and note. And yes, sir. One last thing is we've started as the delegation uh, the county delegation is starting to go through the creator to finance uh, uh, budget committee and I've been lucky 
lucky enough to be appointed to be part of that committee and we're starting to review the county budget line by line with each of the departments it is open to the public uh, so anybody wishes to come and see what we're doing we're trying to uh, make sure the county budget is correct <coughs> for what is needed so Thank you, sir. We greatly really appreciate it. On everything is part of Laconia. Okay. Any other, any other questions or comments for the representative? Again, uh, Representative Bogart, thank you very much for coming and sharing tonight. My pleasure. I apologize. That's no, okay. I think you look. I, I don't think anyone here disagrees with the point <coughs> you're at all by any means. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, so. We're not talking. We do. Yeah, we'll move on to number 15, which is uh, Good. Uh, mayor's, mayor's report. It, it certainly, you know, a number of ways. There, there, there are many ways to cut those numbers and to analyze those numbers. Uh, uh, but I, I, I think all of us sit here and agree with you, Councilor Cheney. Um, uh, downshifting um, has gone on for a significant period of time. We've, Anything we can do mm -hmm. to avoid it, particularly when this, the, the state seems to be, uh, at least by those numbers, appears to be in the tall cotton. <laughs> yeah, um, so that uh, may be what rattles me here, sir. I apologize. That's that's that, I, I get it. Um, I, I, I would I would like to say I'll just comment on on one, one item, uh, and that has to do with uh, I know a particularly sensitive subject in the city, which is uh, um, homelessness and and what we're seeing and what's going on. Um, um, I, I'm greatly appreciative of uh, uh, the governor uh, pulling together uh, mayors from throughout the state, as well as uh, interim director Weaver and director uh, Santanello uh, and legislative leadership this past week to talk about how do we how do we find a way to work, um, uh, have a stronger collaboration between the cities um, and, and the state and better understanding what is available to address some of the housing issues that have some effect on um, homelessness and housing instability in the area, in this city. Um, and um, I, I, without getting into the weeds of it, um, uh, it was a very productive conversation. And I think there is a very much a, a sincere um, desire uh, at the state level to work with people, uh, work with cities um, and towns that. Uh, that are affected by this to, f to begin to find some solutions. Um, and so um, nothing yet, um, but it certainly will reiterate the fact it's a complex problem. It's going to take a complex solution, uh, but we have a lot of uh, uh, smart people who are really uh, very concerned about what's going on in the cities like Laconia. So uh, greatly appreciative of that. Um, under s item number 16, uh, which is council comments. Any council, Councilor Felch. Yeah, I just want to bring up the fact that we got some snow, and it looks like we'll probably have a sled dog race um, this coming Saturday at Laconia Country Club. They'll have their yearly auction, which raises money to make sure this thing keeps going. Uh, preview is from 5:30 to 6:30, and the auction is at 6:30. So, I invite everybody to join in. Thank you, Councilor Felch. Any other? Councilor Haynes. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I just have three things, and they're very brief. Um, I wanted to thank the uh, county commissioners for uh, moving along the process with the Lakes Region developers in the fact that they may be in very quickly of, of purchasing the property on, <coughs> on Bay Street for a development of uh, some low-income um, housing and some other things that they've proposed. So that's good news, and that would... Uh, straighten out that property on uh, Bay Street. The other thing was there was a question by a constituent about the parking lot deterioration of uh, 564 Main Street that is on the budget uh, that has been budgeted, uh, I believe. It has been requested as part of the DPW's request uh, oh, okay. for capital. It hasn't been um, funded or not funded yet. It's in the process. All right, thank you. The other thing was it's been brought to my attention of some serious parking issues at district court. I've had a discussion with our city manager. Uh, we're by no means ready to bring that in, uh, before the council, but I just want you to be aware that that's on the table. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Thank you, Councilor Haynes. Any other council comments? Councilor Cheney. Thank you, sir. <coughs> I, uh, I had spoken to the, well, I, I spoke here before and I spoke to the manager uh, subsequently about uh, statutory language on unapproved streets. And I was hoping that if not at this meeting and some near meeting, soon we might have uh, a report. It's my understanding there's uh, a legislative provision for how cities and towns can uh, acquire those those streets if they're, they've been maintained for 20 years prior to uh, 1968. So I'm, I'm hoping we can take a look at that statutory language and see if it applies to any of the 100 or so uh, unapproved streets we have. Um, <coughs> Councilor, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Is that something that we should uh, uh, put as an, an agenda item under government operations and ordinances? I'd be fine with that, yes, sir. So maybe we could do that and push that right along so take a look at the statutory language on it and um, get back to the council as a whole and see what next steps we might take or consider taking. Yeah, I would probably say legal needs to look at that as well. I, uh, and I can give you some I've had a, a couple of uh, constituents on Clearwater Place uh, who have expressed a concern. I hope the planning department can uh, update me on uh, a prior owner-occupied building is now being, uh, uh, bed and breakfast is now being uh, rendered out uh, by a non-owner occupied uh, owner. And I hope we could get uh, some clarification of that. I'm finally cutting my list short, Mr. Mayor. I don't favor. care about the length of your list, I, the, 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 the length of the comments. No. <laughs> Stand by. <laughs> uh, the last one is, I would hope you would send to uh, uh, the ordinance committee a flag display uh, before that becomes a problem. That is flags. To so yeah, so we worked on that with uh, uh, the previous city manager, and he gave a recommendation. Was it adopted? Voted on and adopted? I don't. I don't believe okay. I thought, I thought it was, which was the city flag, the state flag, the U.S. flag. You know, at certain times of the year or whatever, but. I don't think it was really limited. No, I don't think. I don't, think it ever got I, I don't believe it was ever voted on. It was discussed when there was some came up, but I don't think there was anything ever put in front of you for a vote. So, uh, w would you, you be will. so kind as to uh, get us a synopsis of what we worked on previously, which would have been last June, the end of last June? Yep, I can do that um, the next meeting. And, and let's. Um, that may very well be something that they, we should look to to structure, formalize, um, and. Um, share that with the government operations and ordinances. Yep, I can do that. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're welcome. I'm all set. Good. Any other any other comments? No. How about liaison reports? Excuse me, committee re committee reports. Any committee reports? Uh, liaison reports. Yes, Council just Council. quickly, Mayor. Um, just for the council's uh, knowledge, that the uh, the Heritage Commission has been has spent a lot of time this uh, past fall and early this year that the uh, number of demolition permits and they're usually all cottages. And um, the good thing is the cottages are coming down and the um, people are building residential houses year round. Thank you. Could you go say back? Okay. No, there's, there's no going back. <laughs> <laughs> go right ahead. We have one more yeah, go on the committee reports. Yes. Government on government operations and ordinance met earlier before the council this evening, and we discussed. Speak right into the microphone. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. We discussed a number of different things. Um, whoops, that's yours. This is the one I wanted. Okay. We talked first with the city planner and working on a um, definition and what we do with like dilapidated or abandoned properties. And the fire and, chief. And the, the fire chief was here, the city planner, the city manager, and the committee of 
Councillor Felch, Councillor Cheney, and myself. Okay, and we've, it's gone back to the city planner to get some definition with the city manager on dilapidated buildings, hazardous stuff like that. Going to check with some of the other cities within the state. Come back to us with an ordinance, an updated ordinance that we can bring forth. That's got a little more st strength and clarification to it. Okay. Thank you. Then we had another discussion concerning the historic district. Okay and their outline of uh, their, their charter, you might say, and the way they want to operate. That was given to us, have to review by the city planner and the, the two commissions, okay? Uh, a lot of red, red line uh, updates done to it. We've had a couple of questions in regards to um, the possibility of combining the two, historic and, and uh, heritage together, okay? So that we have one because it seems like the, uh, I believe it was the Heritage Commission, all they're really doing is a lot of uh, um, demolition permits. And we should try and bring that together and work that through. So those two items, what we talked about earlier, those will be coming back to us later on. And we'll add that to the agenda of the items we just talked about. Thank you, Councillor Susie. Uh, um, that, uh, go right ahead. Bruce, is there anything else? We nope. Want, nope. Who else? I'm okay. set. I wanted to make sure we had... Thank you. Um, um, uh, City Manager, I just, uh, when you uh, speak under agenda item 20, just uh, maybe an update on 65 Gale Avenue would, would, would be good since we've received a number of contacts oh, yeah. just where we're at yep. on that, okay? Yep. So uh, any other liaison reports? Seeing none. Under agenda item 19, this is citizens request a comment on current agenda items. There's a current agenda item that you'd like to speak to, please step right up, introduce yourself. Um, ordinary, ordinarily have about three minutes or so to speak, but. You clearly haven't met me if it's three minutes. My name's Kevin Eastwood, and uh, I, I would just like to talk about the spaces that are up for grabs on the uh, Lakeport Community Association. Um, a lot of people on that, I know Tony knows where it is. A lot of folks don't even know where, where it is. These are behind the uh, marina in Lakeport, the old fire station. There's 14 spaces that are city owned that, were, that we've been using for 20 plus years. And uh, when the, the uh, Opera House came in, on their website it says overflow parking, there's 14 spaces over there. Um, I talked to them back in 2021. They didn't realize that they were, you know, that belonged to us. And it's been a, just a, a wonderful uh, cooperation between the two of us. Um, then Bonnet, Page, and Stone came in and they put up their, uh, their trailer and their staging, and it's been a great relationship with them also. I, I know for a fact that it's going to help us when it's all said and done. But when it's all said and done, if we don't have that parking space, uh, it's going to be a problem. There's 17 members of the association. One of the past presidents this venue was named after. And uh, when, when he was around and had a voice in here, we... Uh, didn't seem to be up for grabs as much as we are now. Um, it doesn't seem like a, a big thing, but that that uh, that building that's been there and the museum has been there for many many years. A lot of the stores that were torn down where the new building is, you know, there was Larry's Market and his son is on the uh, is in the group. Uh, Wanda, who had Wanda's Beauty Salon, which was again. <coughs> a long time before some of your time, but again, we have, we've had an opportunity to use that and, and use it quite well. And if we do lose those parking spaces, uh, we're going to end up having to close the doors. That means we're not going to have any more you know, Lakeport Association anything in there. And whatever we can do to keep those, you know, it's only 14 spaces, and in the scheme of things, it's not that much. And to the extent that it's not that much, we ought to be able to keep it. Thank you, Mr. Eastwood. I appreciate Thank you. speaking tonight. 
Any other citizen requests to comment on current agenda items? Welcome. Hello. My name is Jessica Jacobson from Wilcox and Barn, Inc. I'm representing Naughty Marina, Inc. for the Naughty Marina Redevelopment Project. So I wanted to speak on the parking aspect of that project. I know that that is what is under discussion. Um, as you are likely aware, the Naughty Marina 35 Winnesquam Ave property is an existing marina property that is in need of repair and replacement for many different structures on site, mostly all of them. Um, and it's a mixed use, uh, four parcels of mixed use. So there's two residential buildings, there's a commercial store over the water, and then there's multiple disjointed boathouses. The current project is to consolidate those boathouses into two marina structures. The reason for two being that after discussing with the state and going back and forth, we have done so in order to allow for a larger buffer to the existing sewer lines. So there are two proposed marina boathouses. We are proposing to eliminate the commercial property and then essentially repair and replace most everything else in the same location, including the boat ramp, the retaining wall, and open air docking spaces. Um, with this redevelopment, we have the same amount of boat slips. So there will be 51 boat slips that are existing and there are 51 that are proposed. As such, there, um, the, the need for parking is not expected to be increased or decreased. It is expected to remain the same, but there is existing items that are non-conforming in a way in the sense that existing grandfather parking or the way that parking is being used for the head-in parking is encroaching over the right-of-way. With part of this redevelopment, all items are being reviewed uh, per the regulations as a whole. So as such, uh, the proposed head-in parking spaces are decreased in a way to decrease the encroachment on over the right-of-way. With that being said, there are six spaces that do slightly in encroach over the right of way, not over the edge of pavement, but over the right of way. We have decreased and we have eliminated a significant amount of head and parking that encroaches even further. So we are trying to make it more nearly conforming while also adhering to the regulations and the intent of having on-site parking. So I'm available for any questions that you may have as well. Councilor oh, thank you. I have a question for our planning director. Is, does this come up in front of the planning board and what is their position? So how about, uh, I, uh, yep. any, any, any questions for this? No, no, no I don't know. Okay. Okay. Thank you Thank very you for much. your time. Yes. Dean, come on up if you can, if you're open for a question. Yeah, the project is presently before the planning board for review. Uh, they, they will be at the February 7th meeting. Uh, they were at the January meeting. Uh, there are a couple of still outstanding issues, but, and one of them is the uh, allowance for the head-in parking. Uh, but it is before the planning board, and um, they have not indicated one way or the other, you know, how they I, are going to be voting. Okay, one other quick, if I may. I know the last time the um, our public works director was here, when Wes was talking, he was talking about a real problem in regards to the sewer line. Yep. Has that been addressed? That is in the process of being addressed. Um, th uh, there are still a couple of technical issues left to... Uh, Resolve, and I know that uh, uh, Jessica and the team uh, have been working with DES and uh, with uh, uh, Wes at DPW on those items, and they're they're very very close to having agreement on everything. Well, I want to make sure that the city is protected in this uh, because somebody busts open one of those lines, we got a big problem. Absolutely. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Mayor. Just for the one. Dean, um, when Mr. Martell owned that. That was head in head in. in oh, there was a lot more head in parking yeah. than what be, is exactly. being proposed. So this yeah. is really not a. It is a change. It's not. It's not anything new. It's just that we've become aware of the regulations and okay. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks, Dean. Thank you. I think it's great to have that place. <clears throat> oh, yeah. So moving on to um, any other citizen request to comment on current agenda items. Oh boy. You get away with that. Seeing none. Oh. <laughs> get away with time for him to get some very time. I could have done this, I suppose. Mm. Welcome, mm. Representative St. Clair. Thank you. Nice thank you. Thank you. And I, I want to, uh, before I talk about what I want to talk about, Councillor Cheney, <clears throat> your comments about the uh, meals and rooms uh, were right on the mark. And uh, I, I know that the last 
state slate of uh, representatives were very proud of the fact that when I get a cup of coffee now at Cumberland Farms, technically I'm supposed to save a half a cent. Um, they, I don't know how they never figured that out, but and I know I know this fine gentleman here will will, will do his job. But you're absolutely right about that, and uh, the, the meals and rooms tax, and also the retirement fund. That you know they've been screwing around with that a long time, uh, much to the uh, cost of everybody in this city, never mind statewide. So hopefully, in any event, I'm, I'm here to talk about. I missed the public hearing meeting on this, but and this is about the uh, property at, uh, on Elm Street and the parking spaces there. I've heard your comments. Uh, about the great job the developer Scott Everett has done, and he has done a great job there. Uh, he's put a lot of money into it, but he's a smart guy, and he obviously, along with the, the Opera House, uh, had his plans well in advance. Uh, but I never heard anything about these parking spaces on Elm Street uh, when this was all first being proposed. I just heard about it briefly at the last planning board meeting, and. And correct me, Dean, but I don't think we voted on anything on that. Um, we just had some comments about it. My concern, and I never thought about the Lakeport Association, that, that's also a, a very good point. My concern is that this is a city street. Uh, I'm not even talking about Railroad Avenue. As some of you may know, uh, there have been some property owners on Main Street, including the city with the Colonial. Uh, <coughs> on Lakeside Avenue that have put a lot of money into their, their businesses. What would stop them from coming up and saying, geez, you know, I've just done all this work and I sure would like to have five spots here in front of my business to help my business out uh, and not have other people parking here. I, I, I think it's a very bad precedent. Um, there was a comment made to me about people maybe parking there and, and for two hours or three hours and using the wild trail, well, that's a, something that could happen right here in downtown. Maybe it does, I, I don't pay attention. At my business, right down the street here, parking is always, and no remarks about my loading zone, but um, parking is a premium down there. Um, and quite frankly, uh, my customers, some have parked have found out about the church and have parked over there and walked over. Um, that's, just, that's just the nature of, of the beast. If, if uh, Scott or somebody else is concerned about the length of time people park there, you know you can regulate that. You've done that on Church Street in front of the spa with 15 minute parking. You've put some loading zones and restricted some parking on Canal Street to help some of the merchants over there. It, it's not something you haven't done. But to take away a, a section of parking on a city street, I think sets a bad precedent. Uh, I, I will remind you, uh, I don't believe it was Jim Morash, but at one time, uh, the Mount Washington wanted about 15 to 20 spaces on Lakeside Avenue reserved specifically for their customers. And w what the city did to, to resolve that was they put longer parking meters at the time. Uh, I think they had five hour limits on them. So you could feed the meter up to five hours, which would cover the boat crews and stuff like that. But they, they weren't given the right to own those parking spots on the street. Again, I'm just, I've spoken to several citizens about this and, and uh, I haven't found any disagreement uh, with what I'm saying right now. I just think you should really think this out. And again, I, Scott Everett has done a great job, but he's not alone. There's a lot of other people, maybe not on that level, but they've put money into their businesses to upgrade them and, and, and make them uh, beneficial to themselves as a business person, but also to the public and, and other businesses at, at the same time. So I really hope you think long and hard about this. I don't believe you're voting on this tonight. It says discussion in here. So are you discussing it or voting on it tonight? I think it's our anticipation that it may be, dis it's on the table. It okay. may come off the table for discussion, but I don't anticipate a vote. Okay. Thank you all very much for your time, and it is absolutely a thrill to be standing before you again. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Emphasis on standing, right, Charlie? Yeah. It's a thrill for us, too, Representative. <laughs> uh, let's move along to uh, the city manager's report, uh, agenda item number 20. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't have a lot for you tonight, so I'll get right into it. Um, the uh, Public Works is uh, meeting with 
interested contractors for our road program next year. We don't know what the financing is going to look like yet as far as how much we're going to have in the budget for it. So they're, they're just working out all those details now. And when they know what, they, uh, what they're funded with, they'll be able to start making decisions on what gets repaired and what, what work gets done. I'm not going to talk about the Wittipasaki River Basin or the sewer collection because we're going to talk about it later. But one thing I just want to mention in there so I don't forget to say later, in the uh, undercurrent under the Wittipasaki River Basin, it shows that we have a – they estimate their budget for their two years. They came in under budget, so we have to pay more. So we have to pay the overage. That's um, not an uncommon practice to have to happen. Um, this number here that you'll see, the 393000 um, and I don't even know if I've talked to the Finance Committee about it. I can't remember, but it's, that's been factored into the numbers that, um, that you saw and that we'll be discussing later. So that, that's, that's in there. Um, and that's all I have on that piece. On the Economic Development Report, um, not a lot of major changes with the unemployment rate. Um, and on the second page, you'll see that uh, we've gone through our 12 months. So our uh, um, annualized CPI number, which is one of our factors for the tax cap, came in at 8%. That's all I have on those two topics. Um, as far as your GALEV, I did ask uh, the planning director, so I'd, if you're all right, I'll defer to him. He sure. was looking into it for me. Uh, we have notified the property owner that, in our opinion, he does not qualify for the owner-occupied uh, provision. Uh, because he's not living on the property and has another primary residence elsewhere in the state. Um, he uh, maintains that he is, and he is supposedly putting together additional documentation to try to prove to us that, that he is. We have not seen that documentation yet. Um, there's, there's a limited amount of time that we can wait for him to provide that. I mean, he's either got it or he doesn't have it, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so, uh, you know, a few more days or, or so uh, to wait for that information, and then we will uh, go to the next step to try to enforce and um, uh, and and end the short-term rentals at that at that property. I know over the past, uh, I think it was last weekend, uh, not not this past weekend, but the weekend before. Sorry, uh, the holiday weekend, uh, there was uh, uh, an issue with parking in front of the property and uh, and that's a continuation of, a, of the same kind of stuff that's been going on for a few months now so I, I some of us I think received notification that it was perhaps rent perhaps rented out again this weekend mm -hmm. yeah I'm not sure about this past weekend but I, I, I yeah so what's the what's the process for the city um, one he's got the application in it's been denied but he apparently the owner apparently continues on behaving as if he has the special exception and qualifies. So uh, how, wh wh what's the action? How do you calculate the fines that might be accruing right now? And when's the start date? And what's the plan? Let's, if he doesn't provide that information that you're looking for, for a special exception, how do you go about collecting? We would have to issue them an, a violation notice. We have not done that yet because we're in this kind of negotiating period right now. I know it's frustrating for the for the neighbors. So uh, are you accruing these days, or does it just start when you, you when we when you send the actual violation notice? Then then it could, would start at that point in time. It is two hundred seventy five dollars a day, but we need to go to court in order to get that assessed. It would just seem to me, if you want to have some real teeth in this, you know, being able to have a look back period here, you know, I, I'm getting the impression it's just open defiance of, of the city right now. And um, I think that's an accurate uh, yeah. and, and, summation. You know, this, is, this is the type of stuff as it impacts the quality of life of people around them, or, or around that, 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 that house. That, I mean, it's, it's totally unfair to them. And... Um, you know, he's, this owner is taking in Airbnb income every weekend, and um, the city is really just sort of, you know, somewhat impotent up until the point we decide to issue the notice. I, I'm, anyway, it's frustrating. Yep. Council Whitman. I'd ask that you issue the notice and negotiate afterwards. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we can do that. I'm with Councilor Lippman. All right, very good. 
I, I, I also. I don't think. I don't know. No, I don't think so. I, I, I'm going to bring up one question, Mr. Mayor. Is that I wonder if we should bring this back to our um, ordinance committee and see if we can strengthen it. If we need to strengthen the ordinance or the regulations or the, whatever it's set for the Airbnb to. So we can move like this. There is something behind it from our end. Well, I'm happy. Uh, I'm certainly happy to, to take it back. Uh, you take it back there and take a look at it. I, I just, I, I, I think it's always. I think they should always be open for for reconsideration and improvement. I don't, I don't know if we're for, ready for a rewrite quite yet. I mean, but, Councilor Lippman, if I could, when we're trying to um, enforce something, it's not the time to start to change the regulation mm -hmm. in the middle of it. So I, I'd suggest that we get through this situation under the current ordinance and then. Uh, refer it um, that you, you can't be changing the rules and enforcing at the same time. Right. I, I agree with that. I just want to make sure that we're ready to well, change it I, later. I think it's always in your pr pr prerogative to, to, to be looking at ordinances and bringing them. I mean, I don't think we're quite there yet to rewrite, and I, I agree with Councilor Littman. That's not the appropriate time. Um, um, I could secondarily, we might learn something through the process right. that would inform it. <laughs> so. Yep. Correct. Dean can come back and let us know. Dean, have you one. had any pro and any progress as far as hiring an outside vendor to track these these units that are? Uh, I have talked with several vendors. Um, we're going to go out for a request for pro proposals uh, shortly. Um, I, I've committed to them that when we do that, I'll let them know directly. There's three or four different companies that we've talked with. Uh, they all offer approximately the same services. They all offer approximately the same cost. There are differences. Um, so we, we will uh, uh, put the formal, I mean, we're talking 18 to 20 something thousand a year. So it, it's, it's got to go out for uh, uh, the bid process. But so we're, we're in the, we're, we're ready to do that very shortly. Okay. I wanted to ask a different question. Sure. Since um, this is actually to the manager and the, the accessory dwelling unit, I know has been um, a rewrite of that uh, based on councilor comments has been affected by all the other things that are going on in the department. Do you have any forecast on that uh, coming back to us? Um, I, I I apologize, uh, Councilor Lippman, uh, uh, for the delay. Um, but quite honestly, I think we're looking at probably a uh, March to April time frame. Thank you. Anything else? That's all I have for my report. Thanks, Dean. Thank you. Kirk. Katie, have I, I mentioned how much I love how you've put the agenda items on the sheets here. <laughs> yeah, we go off, we go in so many directions. It's so nice to be able to look at this and say, man, that's just where we left off. So under new business, item 21A, uh, which is sale of late lots number three and four in the Lakes Business Park. Kirk, would you like to walk us through this just a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. There was a uh, an offer to buy lots three and four in Lakes Business Park. Uh, the commission met. Um, the proposed property use is going to be a solar farm. Um, is is what they what they went with. The commission um, non unanimously, but it was voted by the uh, Lakes Business Park Commission to uh, to accept this. Um, once that moves on, it goes to both. Uh, this council and to the town selectmen in Guilford, they've approved it on their end as well. Um, so the last approval needed would be to uh, for you to approve this sale, and then and we can move that forward. Okay, so the purchase price for lots three and four, um, it's 83 Airport Road Solar LLC, um, has agreed to pay $195,000 total for both both lots. Correct. Correct. For commercial solar. Um, is there a is there a realtor involved in this that we pay? Yes. Okay. Oh, I see weeks at the bottom. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so 
There's a motion here, which is, um, and, and it's a, move, a motion to move to approve the vote of the Lakes Business Park Commission for the sale of Lot 3 and Lot 4 in the Lakes Business Park in the amount of $195,000 and to authorize the city manager to sign the required documents in connection with the sale. So made, motion made by Councilor Haynes, seconded by Councilor Felch. Is there any further discussion on this? Could, Councilor Cheney. Could we just have the size of the two lots? Uh, one is 2.54 acres and the other one is 255. 2.55. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't look. Uh, I have one more question. Yes, Councilor Susie. Kirk, you said there was, it was not a unanimous vote. Yeah, there, was, there was a few questions that were raised. Um, one of them was, it, does this usage conform to the intent. Uh, we did get a legal opinion on it. it, it the legal opinion was although it didn't maybe um, fit the intent of the original park, it, there's nothing in the conveyance that, that disallows you to approve the vote um, for this type of property. Because I think the one of the originations was that it would create jobs and and stuff like that, and this would not. And that, that was what came up in, in the meeting. Um, Council Lippman sits on the committee for, for you. Um, that, that did come up. Uh, we did go through the process of looking into that, and that, that was the answers that we stand at right now. Okay, thank you, thank you. Could we hear from Councilor Lippman? <laughs> uh, I'll ask a quick question. Is there gonna be any type of structure built on the property besides just the I think all they said was if there was, it would be just a small to support whatever they're doing there, but it was going to be a solar array is what they were building. Councilor Cheney, um, the property at 307 Hounsell Avenue, lot three is 2.54 acres. Yes. The 315 Hounsell Avenue, lot four is 2.55, so almost identical in size. Um, certainly if um, um, Councilor Littman would like to speak to this. Yeah. <coughs> of course. I um, I'd raised concerns at, at the meeting and, and was the vote against it but I'm gonna support it here just based on the fact that um, you know I think the the rest of the the uh, business park authority voted for it the town of Guilford has voted for it um, you know in, in my mind uh, it's maybe not the, the highest use for the mm -hmm. for the lots on the other hand this is a, a partnership and and I was the, the only vote against it Against it, I, I feel like um, at this point uh, it, it's, you know, we've not heard anything from any of the um, other business park uh, individuals come up since this time. I think that, you know, we've had the business park authority operating for uh, more than 20 years at this point, and I think there's an interest to finish up the, the uh, tenancy and to put the the park in a different posture, if you will, and that's I think where the rest of the the, uh, the members were. And um, while I don't um, fully agree with that, I'm not so adverse against it that I would vote against it here. Thank you, okay. Councilor Susie. One other question, Councilor Lipman. How many more lots are there to be taken care of? Do you know? There's, there's one remaining. W which one is that one? Is that I believe it's lot one. I believe right there in the corner. Yeah. So there's one. Yep. Because Stafford Oil bought one. Yeah. Right. So, okay. uh, Councilor Felch. Yeah, I was just wondering, how is this tax being that there's no structure and it's not really a vacant lot? So <laughs> we tried to look into that. I'm still trying to look into that. I'm trying to find where these other places, they they built another place and I haven't got the answer. So there's not going to be a whole lot of tax revenue coming out of it. Um, but I, I couldn't tell you what that number is. Okay. That was my other question yeah, it's, I mean, it's not really a vacant lot but there's no structure yeah. so. any further discussion on this matter on, uh, vote on the table motion on the table seeing none all those in favor of this motion please indicate by raising your hands a po oh, you are a little oh, late you're favor, coming in yeah I'm really <laughs> <laughs> all right Five votes in the affirmative. That motion passes. Item number, agenda item 21B, which is a request to approve angled parking on Winnesquam Avenue. The planning board has an application pending from Naughty Marina. 
on one Esquam Ave for a redevelopment of the marina. Part of the proposal is not a marina wants to have angled parking, which we heard about earlier, head-in parking, and a limited section of Winnesquam Avenue under RSA 267-71-I Roman 3. Angled parking is permitted with authorization from the City Council. The applicant has approached Councillor Haynes. <coughs> About, a council, about the council approving angle parking. Historically, the previous owner had angled parking on, on a longer section of Winnesquam Avenue. This requires a change to ordinance 221 parking, standing and stopping section 28 angle parking. Proposed amendment is attached to your packets this evening. Right now, I'll be looking for a motion to waive the reading of this ordinance in its entirety and to read by title only. So made by Councilor Susi, seconded by Councilor Cheney. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. If five votes in the affirmative, that motion passes. Secondly, looking for a motion to move for first reading of amending ordinance 221-28 angle parking to allow angle parking on the limited section of Winnesquam Avenue. So made by Councilor Haynes, seconded by Councilor Belch. Is there any further discussion on this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. It's five votes in the affirmative, that motion passes. Finally, looking to for a motion to move a schedule a public hearing on February 13th, 2023, during the regular city council meeting to gather input prior to adoption. So made by Councilor Haynes, seconded by Councilor Lipman. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. That motion passes. We'll move on to item number 21C. Item 21C is Laconia Fire Department Walmart grant acceptance. Accept um, uh, fire Department has been awarded a grant of $22,500 for the purchase of medication pumps, associated equipment, and various EMS training. Um, this grant acceptance is recommended due to IV medication pumps with associated equipment being required at the ALS level and the benefit of increased EMS training because the amount of the grant, a public hearing is required. So we have a series of three motions right now. This was submitted by um, Fire Chief uh, uh, Joe Burt. First motion is looking for a motion to move to waive a reading of resolution 2023-01 in its entirety to read by title only, so made by Councillor Cheney, seconded by Councillor Haynes. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. The five votes in the affirmative, that motion passes. Second, looking for a motion to move a first reading of resolution 2023-01 relative to the acceptance of the Walmart community grant in the amount of $22,500 for the Laconia Fire Department. So made by Councillor Cheney, seconded by Councillor Haynes. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. Five votes in the affirmative. That motion passes. And finally, looking for a motion to move to schedule a public hearing on February 13th, 2023, during the regular city council meeting to gather input prior to any action being taken. So made by Councillor Haynes, seconded by Councillor Cheney. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. It's five votes in the affirmative, and that motion passes. Item number 21D, which is acceptance and approval of grant from the recycling partnership that defrays the cost of purchasing recycling containers as part of the conversion to automated collection. West not being here. Uh, Kirk, would you just uh, give us a... Yep. This was a grant that was... Um, should have been in front of you um, during the budget season. Um, they applied for it um, and it's been accepted uh, by doing this. It's a reimbursable grant or reimbursement grant. So we will spend uh, the money on the, on the totes uh, for the recycling containers and we will uh, receive back $97,544 um, to offset those costs as a reimbursement. There's also another $7,600 in there uh, for a, um, educational campaign that we can do um, for getting out into the public and, and showing what we uh, how to do this and how to how to make this work correctly and the the uh, public works director and I have been working on what it's going to look like and uh, so we'll be uh, we'll be starting that shortly so uh, this grant will handle those two pieces and uh, it'll help off uh, definitely defray you know over a hundred thousand dollars worth of cost of the city so the, the grant from the Recycling Partnership will reimburse $15 to the cost of purchasing uh, recycling containers. 
They also have 7,700, 7,600 towards conducting an outreach program, which I think is critically important. And the reimbursement for the purchase of recycling containers will not exceed $97,544. Um, so uh, accepting the grant will reduce the cost of purchasing the recycling containers by up to that 97000 and will defray the cost of any outreach program that we plan to do, and certainly, hopefully, it's a robust one. So um, right now, I'll be looking for a motion to move that the City Council approve the acceptance of the Recycling Partnerships Grant, approve the grant agreement, and authorize the City Manager to sign the grant agreement. So made by Councilor Susi, seconded by Councilor Cheney. Is there any further discussion on this, on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. That's five votes in the affirmative, and that motion passes. Item number 21E, which is authorization of boat dealers to act as agents for the city of Laconia. Boat dealers uh, listed below have been operating as agents for the city in the collection of boat fees for the last several years. The state has required these dealers to show evidence of a surety bond in order to authorize them to collect fees for the city and state. The city can cover these dealers under our current bonding insurance at no additional cost, provided that they are authorized annually by the city council to act as agents. Fiscal year 2022, the city received approximately $120,000 in boat registration fees collected between these dealers and the city clerk's office. Um, the staff recommendation is asking the council to authorize, uh, the um, city clerk is asking the council to authorize the following boat dealers to act as agents for the city. Flight Craft General, North Water Marine, Watermark Marine, Paugus Bay Marine, Lakeport Landing, Irwin Marine, and Winnesquam Marine. So right now I'd be looking for a motion to approve the renewal of the boat agent agreement between the state of New Hampshire, DMV, and the city of Laconia and boat dealers. So made by Councillor Haynes, seconded by Councillor Felch. Is there any further discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. It's five votes in the affirmative. That motion passes. Next, looking for a motion to authorize the city clerk to sign the boat agent agreement on behalf of the city of Laconia. So made by Councillor Felch, seconded by Councillor Haynes. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hand. Five votes in the affirmative, but that motion passes. Moving along to item under unfinished business. Item number 22A, granting, granting an easement on city land. Um, Dean, since you're still here, could you maybe come up and walk us through this briefly? Yeah, so once again, this is the piece of land the city owns uh, from the end of Spruce Street to uh, out to uh, Growth Road, which is part of the uh, Lakes Business Park. Uh, the easement is to create a uh, second driveway for the uh, proposed apartment complex. Because of the number of units that they have at the site, they need to have two driveways. It's a fire code uh, requirement. Uh, so in, in addition to uh, meeting that code requirement, the other advantage of having the second driveway is that it does, helps disperse the traffic from the apartment complex in uh, two different directions. So that's not all uh, ending up on Providence Street. I have Council Letman, go right ahead. So I think when this came before us, I think we were supportive of it, but there were certain conditions in terms of what was going to be constructed, lighting, so forth. Right. I don't see these in, in here. And uh, unfortunately, one of the attachments that you should have gotten, you did not uh, get. Uh, but I have some copies here. Uh, so if you could take one and pass it around. Uh, we went back to the planning board on um, January 10th and um, uh, proposed a additional set of conditions uh, for uh, uh, that the, the developer would have to adhere to, uh, which I believe address the issues that you raised, Councilor Lippman, uh, concerning the uh, standards to which the road would be constructed, uh, the lighting uh, atmosphere and the, the standard of, 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 of maintenance. In addition to that, there was a, a line in, in, uh, inserted into the proposed easement language, uh, which kind of repeats the same thing. And I'll just read that one line. Uh, other than that, the easement language is the same as what you saw before. 
uh, but the, there's an additional sentence that says the roadway will be constructed and maintained in accordance with the city's requirements and specifically in conformance with the planning board approvals of May 2nd, 2022, June 7th, 2022, and January 10th, 2023. Uh, I have talked with the uh, representative of the developer. They are okay with those sets of conditions that we just approved and it was a, their intention to do this anyway. So when it says city type street mm -hmm. construction standards, it seems like a loose term. Mm -hmm. Well, the city has. I know we do multiple standards depending right. upon what DPW views as the amount of traffic, and 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 so it's like, just so it's to a city standard, not necessarily the same standard that would be for uh, Union Avenue, but it would be to a city standard, which is over and above what we would require for say a private driveway or a private road. Councilor uh, Susi? I, I still have problems with that wordage because I want to make sure that we don't ha end up with a situation like we've had before with other private ways that all of a sudden the developer's gone and we have to find ways to maintain or accept the street. Should we, is there something that, or maybe I'm just thinking too much on it. We want to make it so that if something happened, that is could be very easily just turned into an accepted city street. So to turn into an accepted city street would require your action. And so it would have to as go through the city council. The, the building of the road will be built to city standards that if we had to go in and take it as a street, we wouldn't have to do anything else to it. That's, I think, and is my bottom if it line was, question. If it was relatively new, that would be a correct statement. If it's 20 years down the road, just like any other road, it would be in whatever condition it's in. I, I, think, I think the issue is understanding there's a difference between Union Avenue and, say, um, Pleasant Street and um, you name another street name. Okay. Yeah. Um, Linney Lane, for example. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think what we're expecting is that it's built to us a standard where reasonable the standards related to the amount of traffic that's expected yep right and that it that it would be accepted as a road under the expected reasonable level of um, traffic and so I guess I just have if you could give us a specific citation here that this means I think that would put comfort to us off the top of my head I can't do that <laughs> I would sure. say Liddy Lane's a good, a good example. Yeah, I mean, uh, we have accepted that as a city street. I mean, it's, it, it is built to a different standard than, say, when we reconstruct portions of Elm Street. It would, it's, it's a different standard, but it's still a city standard. And I think that's the type of city standard we want. Yeah. I don't know if there's any type of description that you could put in there saying that it would be that standard. Okay. Can we get some input from uh, Mr. Anderson? Not tonight, not, we can't. Not tonight, not tonight. <laughs> because I know he's hopping around, but I mean, if you. I think Councillor um, Payne, I mean, uh, sorry, Felch. Felch, the sign's in the wrong place, that's why. <laughs> 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 that's why I'm like, I'm looking at the signs. That's not right. uh, Who are you tonight? <laughs> well, I'm between Bob Hamill and the mayor, I think. Uh, <laughs> no, you're yep. not even there. Yeah, yeah, over there. There you go. There you go. <laughs> oh, here I am. There you go. There you go. I've so, been so I think if, if you could insert the standard that I when Elaine the citation there, I'm comfortable voting on it if the, if that's inserted. I am too. Okay. We can do that. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yes. Now I have to throw a wrinkle in. <laughs> <laughs> so we had looked at the language from that piece of property in the past. Um, the more we were prodded to look at it a little bit deeper, that land that's out there is actually purchased through land and water conservation fund money, which is federal. Um, I, not being a lawyer, but I read the, read the terms and I, I felt like we were fine in doing what we were doing. But when the dog park went in and I think a lot of you were here when that happened, it was quite a process to get done. Um, I've, it just recently, I've asked the um, Parks and Rec Director to, to reach out to um, the state, which is the grants management for the feds for this program, 
So I do not have an answer on is this a simple, yeah, that makes sense, let's do this easement, or is it going to be a long process? So unfortunately, yeah, I know where this is going, and uh, but I wanted to <laughs> unfortunately make Pushing sure. The tables made yeah. by Councillor Lippman. Yep. Is there a second? <laughs> yep. Councillor Susi, non debatable. All those in favor? Aye. Five votes in the affirmative. This item is tabled. Item number 22B, changing the proposed Laconia Housing and Redevelopment Authority tenant at 17 Church Street. Um, Tom Cochran was obviously addressed this a little bit earlier, um, and we had a public hearing on it as well. So um, if you don't mind, I'd be looking for a motion right now to approve the changing of the proposed Laconia Housing and Redevelopment Authority's tenant at 17 Church Street from Partnership for Public Health to Health First Family Care Center. So made by Councillor Susi, seconded by Councillor Cheney. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. That's five votes in the affirmative. That motion passes. Item number 22C. Request to declare city-owned property on Lafayette Street as surplus property. Um, we've discussed this property, I believe, last week, and we're familiar with it in the packet this week. The Water Department has requested the City Council consider declaring city-owned property on Lafayette Street, parcel 444-126-17 as surplus property. The site was formerly used as a water tank site up until the 80s, 1980s, at which point the tank was relocated to Long Bay. It's now been used as a stockpile site. Um, number of neighborhood complaints over the years about the noise the piles of material <coughs> overall aesthetic of the site um, in early 2022 the decision was made to no longer use the site as a stockpile area as it did not fit with the residential neighborhood in which it sat so the water department is requesting this site be declared a surplus property in order to be able to pursue the sale of it to someone that would have intentions of adding one or more homes on the property. Per section 183 of the city's code, the city council held a public hearing earlier this evening to accept public comment regarding the declaring of the property described as surplus. So, right now I'll be looking for a motion to move to approve the request to declare city owned city, to declare city owned property located on Lafayette Street, parcel 444-126-17 as surplus property, so made by Councilor Phelps, seconded by Councilor Susi. Is there any further discussion? The, uh, I may, Mr. Sure. Mayor, there was a question that came up last week, or uh, last council meeting by Superintendent Crawford, that any funds that we get from the sale be designated or stipulated to the water department. I, I don't see that in here, and I wouldn't want to see that in here. I just want to make you wouldn't want to see that in there. Not want. Okay. Okay. I think if it's a city property, as much as I, I agree with it. But it's a city <coughs> property. We will be setting too much precedent, I think. And, and you know, so it's not in the motion. So it looks like it wouldn't be part of the exactly. <clears throat> those not where the proceeds would be going. That's how I read it. For any further okay. discussion, seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please indicate by raising your hands. That's five votes in the affirmative. That motion passes. Mr. on. Council Susie's point, uh, the, um, I have to just ask the manager. I think when we heard testimony from the, the superintendent, there was the original um, purchase of that land may have been paid with, with water funds. So in terms of how it gets adjudicated <coughs> in the future process, just refresh our memory on that history. Um, not tonight. Yep, I can do that. Yep. Yeah, sir, I think, I think you're, that's a good point. I'm going to be fair about it. But. If it, didn't, if it wasn't purchased with water, but then I, 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 I don't think in my mind it doesn't make a difference if it's city property. If we sell it, I mean, if they need a garage, which is what they were looking for to store spare parts or something, then come to the city council, we'll put it into the budget, and we'll go from there. That's that's my I 
Kirk, I mean, I'll yeah, no, that's fine. But we'll, you know, I'll get the exact timeline and everything. Though, so my understanding was at one point it was bought by Waterworks back, in, but the city did purchase it, and, and so I will get the exact timeline through the. Yeah, yep. In my 16 years on the council, it's never come up in another instance. So in terms of <laughs> yeah. precedence, I don't know. We'll take a look at it. <laughs> yep. It's a, a very infrequent one. <laughs> Just want to be fair. Absolutely. So we, um, this is um, <laughs> item number 22D, which is a request to increase sanitary sewer rates beginning in February 1st, 2023. Um, this is a little bit of not really complexity, I don't think, but I, I'm, maybe the city manager can start just walk us through this just just a bit. Uh, sure, like uh, the 30,000 foot view, and then and, and I know Council Littman has worked on this as well. Yeah. So. so there was an original request um, it, it, during the presentation from the public works director um, to how we were going to fund the sanitary sewer fund over the next three years. Uh, I believe the numbers were 14%, 21%, and if I remember right, another 14% increase um, over those three years. The majority of that dealing with the increase in the Winnipesaukee River Basin Program um, costs uh, that was um, sent, then sent to the finance committee to to, to review and to say what can we do better than in those numbers. Uh, the Finance Committee, we um, they met multiple times, worked with the Public Works Director, the Finance Director, myself, um, and we came down to um, a multi-year anticipated program for how much this was going to increase the, um, the rate pairs. Uh, the biggest piece that we were able to take out of it was we moved some capital funding, um, capital expenses rather, some larger capital expenses um, out to bonding um, at a three-year interval, um, which was going to defray the cost. So the taxpayers today aren't paying all of it. It's being spent down the line to the taxpayers over multiple years. Um, and that's where we come to where um, the numbers that are in front of you today. I guess if I could add, mm -hmm. I think our, our goal, was, I think people understand energy costs have gone up, the number of different inflationary factors that current expenses paid by current um, rate users, capital expense, not to pay the 100% of that all at, on the current rate right. payers, but to spread that over future rate payers as well, similar to how we approach the school uh, projects. And so um, it's not as good as we'd like, but it's much better than what was um, uh, cited by Kirk, we we do need to protect the the sewer system in terms of not polluting our waters and so on and so forth. So, uh, it, you know, yes, would Council let me take a question? Does that include the two thousand, the two hundred four thousand dollars for the private sewer system? Not in the FY twenty four. That it is in there in the uh, FY twenty five and out. But it's certainly something we haven't had enough conversations. We do, it's in there as a as a line item, but certainly we can have that discussions moving forward in budget discussions as to whether or not that's going to move forward year to year. Right. Okay. Yeah, I would highly suggest that we need to have more conversation about that. Uh, not so much about the funding, but the uh, legal ramifications about uh, inspecting private sewers and getting involved in private property and mm -hmm. that type of stuff. Right. The only other question I have, City Manager, these projections that are out for nine years, these are, I mean, are these actual actual figures or are they just estimates? Well, there's, and I mean, he can, you know, Glenn Smith can, it can correct me, but there are estimates on some stuff. I mean, certainly, you know, bonding rates and, and what we're going to be spending, that day, there, there are some estimates built into that, certainly. Okay, I'm fine. Thank you, Mayor thing is the ultimate rate is adjusted based on actual mm -hmm. experience and sometimes it'll be a little bit more sometimes it'll be a little bit less depending on you know lining up bids and doing construction and that kind of oh, stuff. Oh I understand but my concern was the fact that you know I hate to use my terminology but there's a lot of water is going to go over the dam and we're projecting Hopefully out through the sewer not <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah well the sewer but yeah we're projecting out to 2032 and uh, that's There's a lot of, I yeah, think you know. It's got to well be estimate. Yes. Mm -hmm. Council Jane, would you have your hand up for a question? I did. Um, I want to compliment uh, the councilor for the work he did to get this spread out over a period of time. I think it was 
better than average work, to be honest. The one thing I would say is I hope after this is done, we can take a look at people who are paying different rates for sewer discharge. I don't, I mean, if we're going to talk about it, it's not fair for people today to pay the whole freight. I don't think it's fair for some people to pay $500 a month and somebody else pay 250 Those numbers I'm picking out of the air, you're right. You're right. But, but I hope we can include that in the discussion later on. Again, I want to compliment uh, the counselor for, for doing something I wasn't sure could be done. I, I, counselor Lippman did an excellent job. Mm. That's right. Counselor Susan. Yes, the only comment, and I guess this is probably directed more towards our state representatives that are here, is that I'd like to see a little bit more oversight. I mean, some of these, this, uh, like this Winnipesaukee River Basin Program or whatever falls under within the state government, it's like, you know, spend whatever they wish to whatever they wish. It's an enterprise fund. We'll just get more money from the cities, just like the county with its budget. Thank you. Well, uh, that's um if, if, I, if I could, uh, Councillor, I think that um, from the presentation we had, I'm not sure that. I know I, we I might disagree, it. but yeah. okay. you know, we all have to I, live I, within I, our budgets. Um, understood. The other thing I think that um, we need to work on as a, as a city is to look at um, opportunities to, um, this whole sewer system was built with a large percentage being federal funds. Um, you may or may not agree with it, but there have been, um, you know, projects that have received federal funding to accomplish certain community uh, and reinvestments or investments, and in that we ought to be looking for our chance to participate in something that's not just for Laconia, but for the whole Lakes region and the whole New Hampshire economy. So working with our federal delegation on you know, potential grants in this space could help uh, you know, what we're doing here and spending here is not just for Laconia and not just for the Lakes Region, but all the water that, you know, right. <laughs> Lake Winnipesaukee is connected to, to OPG, which is connected to Winnesquam, which is connected to Silver Lake, yeah. which right. forms the headwaters for uh, the Merrimack River. Right. So, you know, everybody in the state nearly has and a stake in And at some point it goes over a dam. That's over right. Over a dam into the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> I've always said our water is the biggest asset we have. It certainly is, okay. so, yes. And we've got to protect it. But, and I was asked the same question you have, Henry, about water can, water department, you might say, look at certain things, especially when the council of Cheney's been there with me, especially when we're looking at the you know, state school, how we're going to develop all of that, okay? So, so I guess, you know, in terms of having that on our agenda for working either through Laconia or working through the Winnipesaukee River Basin project on that op that opportunity that, you know, as that, you know, to talk to our, our uh, federal delegation about opportunities that might help uh, the whole region and the whole state in effect. Yep. Yes. So we have a series of three motions right now. I'm looking for a motion to move to waive a reading of this ordinance in its entirety and read by title only. So made by Councillor Cheney, seconded by Councillor Haynes. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. Five votes in the affirmative. That motion passes. Looking for a second motion to approve the first reading of Ordinance 2023-189-50-01, an ordinance amending Chapter 189-50, sewer charges. So made by Councillor Phelps, seconded by Councillor uh, um, Lippman. Excuse me. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. That's five votes in the affirmative. That motion passes. And finally, looking for a motion to move to schedule a public hearing on Ordinance 2023-189-50-01 for February 13th, 2023, during the regular City Council meeting. So made by Councillor Lippman, seconded by Councillor Haynes. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Five votes in the affirmative, and that motion passes. Under item 22E, I believe Council Lippman may be making a motion to the table. Yeah. Uh, taking it up, make a motion to take it off the table, not for purposes of bringing it to a vote, but just to update the discussion. Yep. Is there a second taking it off the table? Second. Second by Councillor Susi. All those in favor? It's five votes in the affirmative. That motion passes, and I'll turn it over to Councillor Lippman. So um, I think what we're, I think we've heard what the public has had to say about, um, you know, 
devoting um, parking spaces to uh, private interest. I think that the approach that we're trying to um, work through, um, taking into account the public comment, is something we describe as a limited license for patron use. I just bring to our attention that, you know, the, the businesses in the downtown, the city has purchased parking lots. Um, we have the city parking lot, we have the parking lot there to support the merchants. Um, we, in um, the weirs, we've spent $4 million to upgrade again. Um, the, the thing is that Lakeport um, downtown, um, there are three main villages in the city. Unfortunately, the, the, the configurations allow for um, some different challenges in trying to address them. And I think what we're trying to do is thread the needle here in terms of trying to um, strike a balance here in terms of what uh, uh, would allow for successful uh, businesses to be available in, in the Lakeport area. Um, tonight, don't have a, a specific. We've um, had some discussions. We went back to um, the city uh, attorney to get some technical issues addressed in um, they're not addressed at this point, so that's why we don't have a proposal on the, on the table. Um, under, understand the the uh, the different um, wants and interests here. I think you know we've been successful um, trying to balance different interests at different points in time. When we had the police station um, that sat idle for 13 years and was a uh, a very bad situation, we came up with some accommodation there. Um, my hope is that we can ultimately come up with an accommodation that sort of balances the, the competing interests and in, in, in how uh, uh, the parking is, is done there. Because I think in, in the long run, you know, if the focus is on patrons being able to use the businesses, that's, that's what we're doing everywhere else in, in some different forms. <coughs> and I suspect that we would have something hopefully by the next meeting to, to the folks and put something to you in advance to, to look at. Can we move to put it back on the table? Yes, sir. Move to the table. Put it back on the table. Second by Councillor. First by Council. Motion made by Councillor Susi. Seconded by Councillor Littman. Non debatable. All those in favor, please indicate by raising your hands. Five votes in the affirmative. That motion passes. The items back on the table. Um, that concludes our business for this evening. Would like to go into non public session. Um, and after returning from public session, it will be only to adjourn the meeting. There will be no additional business uh, taken up at that point in time. So, uh, uh, agenda item number 26. I'd like to, looking for a motion to go into non-public session under RSA 91A colon three, Roman two, Uh, parentheses small d consideration of the acquisition sale or lease of real or personal property which if discussed in public would likely benefit a party or parties whose interests are adverse to those of the general community so made by oh, we're not there. Sound councillor Susie seconded by councillor Cheney all those in favor please indicate by raising your hands five votes in the there needs to be a roll call vote roll call, roll call. So close. Yep. <coughs> Councillor Cheney? Yes. Councillor Susie? Yes. Councillor Lipton? Yes. Councillor Haynes? Yes. Councillor Fouch? Yes. Five votes in the affirmative. Oh, do you ask me? No. Five <laughs> votes in the affirmative. I, I wasn't sure. I, I, I know. Yes. That is true. Uh, five votes in the affirmative. <laughs> that motion passes. So when that door is closed. So 851. 851. 